All right, so let's see here. Let me remove that text. So the main reason I'm doing this is because when I play in my stream, a lot of people always ask me, what's the best way to improve? And the really like basic level thinking of improvement is all about just the fundamentals of macro. Um, because when you improve those, your skill level will go up so much faster than if you improve other areas. Um, what I'm talking about is doing stuff like in a roach battle versus roach. You're fighting 10 roaches against 10 roaches, and you're spending all your effort microing your roaches, like focus firing and pulling back your weak roaches, but you're making mistakes in your macro while doing that kind of stuff. Um, really hits hard like a lot harder than you think. Like it doesn't matter if you win the fight um, if you're not macroing at home. So I want to show exactly how to macro properly. Um, so you should be taking all of this, which I'm going to be talking about, as if you do not have an opponent. Um, it's primarily just if you were to macro and try to max out as fast as you could with no issues, like no harassment, no opponent in general, how can you get there as efficiently as possible? Um, so we're going to be talking about a couple things. Uh, tips, um, advice, tricks, just basic knowledge uh, to try and show you the easiest way to improve your macro. Um, I think I will put this on YouTube. Um, I think it's pretty easy to rip from your Twitch account and get the file, but it should be. So are we almost ready? I'll wait a couple minutes until we actually get to 8 o'clock. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, you want to really master your macro mechanics, and then once you do that, you can start thinking about builds, specific builds, and then once you get those specific builds, then you can tack on the micro, and all of that comes with practice. So we're going to start at the baseline level. Um, you guys feel free to ask questions. I don't know how much we're going to be able to cover. Um, I set up three sections for tonight. Queen usage, larva, macro hatcheries, overlord management, supply blocks. I don't think we're even going to get to here because I have a lot to talk about in these two sections. And it depends on how interactive you guys are in the chat. Um, so we'll see. <clears throat> but again, feel free to ask questions. So let's see here. We'll just get started now. The first thing I want to talk about is queens. So when you think of Zerg, the primary macro, macro mechanic all revolves around queens. It's creep spread and injections. Uh, if you're good at creep spread and you're good at injections, you're probably pretty good at Zerg. Um, because those are probably the most difficult mechanics to really get good at. Uh, so first I'm going to go over some advice on how you should be setting up your queens. Um, before we even get into that, if you don't have a base camera hotkey set up, so you go to hotkeys, go to global, you go to camera, and you go to base cam, you should set that to something easy to use like spacebar. I personally use spacebar. And that allows you to jump between your bases very easily. Um, I'll show you right here. I can hit spacebar and jump between my bases super fast. So that allows me to uh, go to my bases whenever I need to. Um, you can also set up camera location keys. So that's F1, F2, F3, F4, whatever you want. That lets me do this. So that's base 3, that's base 4, base 1, base 2. All of that will help you maneuver around your bases to help you with injections. Um, so you guys probably, if you watch pro matches or just streamers, you'll notice that the Zerg players usually have two groups of queens. There's queens at the front. You can see in the screen kind of they're up there. Um, these are the creep spreading queens. They're the ones that defend versus Hellions, um, protect the creep spread. And then you have your injecting queens. I highly, highly recommend keeping them on two separate hotkeys. So as you can see, I have two sets of queens, or just two queens on hockey five and two queens on hockey zero. Um, zero in my case is rebounded to the tilde key next to the number one. Um, so whenever I want to spread my creep, I double click my tilde key, 
and it pulls me to my creep spreading queens right to the front so I don't even have to go searching for them. So let's say I'm back here injecting then I want to go spread creep I can instantly just do that. So again highly recommend having them on two separate hotkeys. Having queens on your hotkey so hotkey 0 down here is my creep spreading queens and hotkey 5 is my injecting queens and when I want to go inject my bases you can also hit 5 and jump between them with your base camera and I see that hey I have an injection an empty hatchery 5v click takes care of that and then I can see oh I have an injection here I can move on so there's a bunch of little things you can do with, with your camera hotkeys to help you um, inject better how many locations do you use? I currently have five. When I find myself needing six, but control six is really hard to hit, I honestly use one, two, three, four, and I'm so lazy that I don't have hockey five because I can't reach control five. I have small hands. Um, so I, whenever I take a fifth base, I actually manually have to use the camera. Um, but one, two, three, four, if you have five, that's really good. If you could do six, that's really good. So you shouldn't feel bad about not having it. Um, besides that though, the base camera is very useful. So let's talk about how we know when we should be injecting and when we should be spreading creep. A lot of people say you just need to practice the cycle. Should I leave this game? Yeah, I'll leave this game. I have a replay set up so I don't have to keep doing stuff manually. Um, I just wanted to use that to demonstrate how you could jump forward with your uh, Queen hockey, so you can see the front of your creep. The only thing that can teach Ling Bling Buddha, um, I think Pig coaches. Um, he's pretty good, so and I think he's a really good coach. So let's get into this replay. I'm going to talk about the cycles of queens, um, and I'll show you how I demonstrate, or not demonstrate, how I use camera locations and uh, queen hockeys to make stuff work. Thanks for doing this, of course. It's fun and it's helpful to the community. Let me fast forward to where we were at. So, every injection and every creep spread are on the same clock. So when you spread creep, it takes as long to get your new tumor started as it does to have an injection finished. So you should get into the mindset that if you inject, you need to go check your creep. So I'll show you what I mean. See, as soon as these two queens pop, it's injection, injection, and then creep spread, creep spread. That's how it should be every single time throughout the whole game. Okay? So I know it's really busy on the map, especially when you have an opponent. Let's say you're playing Ling Bling, Muta versus Terran. You're constantly focused on your Ling Bling, Muta. But you have to remember to go back to your queens, of course. And then as soon as you go back to your queens to inject, you should check your creep spread. Okay? It should be in that cycle. Inject, creep spread, then back to your army. It's tricky to do that. It takes a lot of APM to do that. Um, which is why I want to tell you to focus more on the injections and focus more on the creep spread than focusing on your army control. Um, the best example I can give to support my claim is that I recently came back to playing StarCraft and in my climb back up to GM, um, I was too slow to micro my army and inject and spread creep. So I would be playing versus Terran and I would take gigantic Widowmine hits. Like I would lose 30 to 40 lings with one hit, which is terrible. And it didn't matter because I just had so much more of an army. So because I was focused on these macro fundamentals, it doesn't matter what's going on over here. If you just have so much stuff, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. So you got to drill home these cycles. Now an injection takes 29 seconds in game. I don't know if this is real time or legacy or harder to swarm. I think it's real time. Um, so you know, it just takes practice to get that cycle down. Um, I'll just show you kind of how it works. Um, and I have another bit of advice in just a second. So, inject, inject, spread, 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 spread. 
We're gonna talk about overlords and stuff later. Yeah, that sounds right. So obviously, you don't, I'm not counting to 30. Um, but I am, I do have like a mental cycle. And I do constantly, I'm checking my bases constantly. So if we'll just go to my vision, creep spread, creep spread. And that means I need to inject both hatcheries. Why is it doing that? That's not fun. All right, so usually when you go first person, it shows you what you're selecting down here. So I'll go into a game later. <clears throat> How do many? I'll show you exactly when I stop making tumors in this game as well. Um, yeah, ping noise. That'd be interesting. So again, cycle, then creep spread. Now, a tip I like to use when I'm playing is I'm always watching this card down here, and it's not going to work because I'm watching a replay. But when you see, like, you hit all your hatcheries, I do that, and then I hit S down here, I see how many larvae I have. If all of a sudden I have, like, 12 larvae, I know my injections just went off. And that tells me I need to go back to my bases and inject. So when you're playing Zerg, and I'm running over here with my Zerglings, I can't, I can't like look at my bases at the same time I'm looking at my zergling. So, but I can look at the command card when I'm looking at my, my zerglings. So, if I see all of a sudden I have twelve larvae down here, that means I know I need to go back down and inject, and then go and spread my creep. So that's like my favorite bit of advice to figuring out the cycle is to pay attention to the command card down here. Um, if, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you in a live game later. Um, but let's just continue on. So spreading creep, three three queens now for creep. And then I moved up to four queens for spreading creep. Um, this is fairly standard nowadays, I think, especially in ZBT. So I have a total of seven queens. <coughs> um, again, I, I know I'm just focusing on the queens right now. I, I'll focus on other aspects as we move on. Uh, I'm just going one step at a time though. So if you look at how I have my creep spread out, I have tumors here, I have one tumor here which I need to spread. Um, I didn't spread because I wanted a vision, which I'll get in a second. I have a tumor going up this ramp, I have a tumor going down this path, I have a tumor going down that path, and a tumor going down that path. So like um, fourth job Hokage mentioned in the chat, uh, there's a limit to how many creep tumors you want to have and that's coming pretty soon, and I'll explain why. <clears throat> I'm gonna put in a busy mode. Um, so you want to have more than one tumor per alley, because as I spread out, think about if I want to spread left or I want to spread right, I can't do both at the same time. So as they're going further down the map, you want to keep spreading in different directions. So this tumor would go here, here, this would go here, and that would go there. And then this would go here, this would go there. So you have to think about the future, what you want to do. So three tumors here, I can put one there, there, and there. Put one there, and I should have more tumors here. And here I'm probably going to put some more tumors just because I only have one. Because um, you really want to have a big spread. Like the more tumors you have spread out, the more difficult it is for them to clear. So let's go back to my vision. Spread and creep. Creep, creep, creep. Okay. And I have to inject. So at this point, it starts to get blurry. Um, when your queens start accumulating energy, the cycle is a little bit different. So you can start ignoring creep spread a, a bit more, and you can f focus a lot more on the injection part. Um, now here's an important part of what I want to talk about. Would you mind talking about your equipment setup? Um, sure. I'll talk about that now. I have Cherry Blue on a DOS mechanical keyboard. I have a Razor Death Adder at some sort of DPI forget actually. It's like either 1200 or 1700. 
Oh, no, I'm down to a thousand right now. A thousand DPA. And I have Bayer Dynamics DT770 headphones. Um, so where was I at? So this is an important part of where we're at. I have a queen here, a queen here, a queen here. I have another hatchery here. I have another hatchery here. That's five queens I need injecting. And I already have seven. And my creep spread is already super, super spread out. Okay, Obviously, it's probably not going to be that good in a real game because your opponent will be harassing. But you get the idea when your creep is in a decent position. I'm going to take these queens and turn them into full-on injectors. And I'm going to show you something that's kind of crazy. So I do it pretty soon here, I think. Also, I have two macro hatches. I actually, I'll explain this later, how many macro hatches you need. Um, so I have five, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six hatcheries, seven queens. So that's actually pretty, you know, balanced. <clears throat> so at this point, I put all my queens on my hockey number five. So I still have those four on my tilde key, but primarily all on five now. And now I don't know when I do it. Also, it's important to note that all my bases are connected by creep, so the queens can move freely. There's no gaps in my creep spread, except for here, apparently. But uh, that means if I take these three queens and I go in and try and eject these two hatcheries or three hatcheries, they can move there really quick. So that's also very important. Um, don't forget to connect the bases. That's if you're going to be doing injection strategies like this, you need to have connected bases. So uh, let me go to my vision. So oh, there. At this point, you can do something cool. You can hold down your base camera key and just hold 5 and just press V like crazy. So if you saw that movement, I have 5. My queen selected. I'll do that in a... Oh, I can't show you because the card doesn't update. Anyway, you hold down spacebar with your queen socket, and you just V-click all over, and it just queues up a bunch of injections. And this is unique to Heart of the, or no, Legacy of the Void, now that you can queue up injections. So the whole time, if you do this properly, you'll have injections running like crazy, and all your queens will have no energy. So you can just focus. It takes like 10 seconds to do that, and you're set for a really long time. You can keep spreading your creep, you can do stuff with your army now. Um, it's really just an interesting method, and I'll show you it live um, after this. So we get the picture, let's run it in a live game, so I'll try and talk through it. And I can show you the command card as well, the time. so we've done 15 minutes. This will take like 8 minutes to do. And then I can move on to the next stop. Oh, I don't want to do ranked. That would be scary. Um, we can move on to the next topic after that. Let's get this started. I think this is probably the longest topic of what we have as well. So I'm just going to talk through exactly like I uh, went through the replay on a baseline level. So <clears throat> I'm just going to play a ZVT opener. Just because that's probably the most creep spread of the th three matchups. So I set up my four base or uh, camera locations. You don't have to do that. And I'll try to be active with my army on the map. I'll make links so I can simulate what it's going to be actually like. Sure, most of you are aware of standard patch gas pool. I'm not going to talk about build orders in this. It's really not relevant because what we're primarily looking at is how to macro rather than how to do a build order. <clears throat> patch gas pool. I'm going to go up to four queens and I'll take a third base. 
Um, we'll talk about overlords after this, I think. Should I do overlords or my skin? No, macro hatcheries. We'll do macro hatcheries next. And larva management. This is just going to take a minute to get started, and I can start talking about it. Um, unfortunately, I, just, I tested it, and you cannot resume a replay when the game is over. So, like, I returned to game because I didn't have an opponent, and it wouldn't let me resume the game because it was already over. So that's kind of unfortunate. Blizzard. I'm just step up the technology. Start hatching. Um, you guys are probably familiar with this opener. Okay. I'm going to add the additional queens. So I put this on my creep spreading hotkey, that's hotkey down here. My tilt key that I have it set to one. Add the additional queen. Now I'm going to go take that third. So I want to put my queens right at the front. I wait for these two to finish. Okay. So now this injection is about to finish, which means this queen has a creep tumor that's going to be ready. Okay. So now I can inject. So I'll inject creep tumor. So basically I see this line here. This is basically a timer telling me when I need to spread creep also. So let me make a little wing army as well. So <clears throat> we'll make lanes on this way. Inject, creep spread, creep spread, creep spread, creep spread, and inject. So this whole time I'm watching my bases, so it's a little bit easier. Um, the next time I'm not going to be watching my bases. Would you scouting, heavy incoming, change, anything? I'm not talking about at all just build orders. Um, this is just how you macro. So what you should be doing is, yes, scouting, and also doing this macro to the best of your ability. Um, you got to do both. That's the tough part. So I'm just talking about the fundamentals right now. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean by when I know my injections are done. So right now I have zero zero zero. And then I just put the creep. And the creep down here. This is a lot harder to talk about and then do it at the same time. Okay, so I only have five larvae, I know I don't have an injection done. Remember guys, I'm not perfect. Like I'm not a machine. So I'm not perfect with this stuff either. So right now I have no larva. Now all of a sudden there's a ton of larva. Like wow, I just did 12 larva. That means my injections are done. That means I need to go spread creep. It's just a cycle. And I'm just constantly because I have high APM, I can look at my lanes constantly and do this. And I can speed up. But you guys get the idea. Um, so there was five larvae there, two larvae, and all of a sudden six, and then two more. Oh, I got supply blocks from talking. <laughs> Shame on me. <clears throat> so I have two. All of a sudden I have this much. So I know I need to go back and spread more. You guys get the picture, right? <clears throat> Alright. So moving on, let's talk about macro hatches. So I don't really want to reset the game. So we'll just move on from... Actually, we'll reset the game.
So uh, anyway, if you can perfect your injects and you can perfect your creep spread, you can do so much better than your opponents, like super high level. Like just by making my injections on time, um, spreading my creep well, and spending my money, um, it pulled me to like here because I was doing it just better than my opponents were. So it just really shows, like, I had no idea what builds to use. I have no idea what the meta game was when I came back, but I still came back at mid-grandmaster just from macro fundamentals. So hopefully that just speaks to how important it is to nail that stuff down. Um, and then from there, you can start working on builds. You can start really practicing your micro. You can start practicing your harassment. As long as you have the baseline macro down, you're going to be set. So let's go back into that replay. Um, I don't even need to replay uh, a game out to demonstrate macro hacked, macro hacks, macro hatches. Um, there's a very important rule to macro hatches. <clears throat> I'll do this on time eight. Time eight. So first off, before we even talk about that, let's talk about larva. How many larva can you hold per base before they start automatic automatically building? It's three. So once you have three larva sitting, they won't make the fourth one, right? So when I used to coach players back in the day, um, very, 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 very common mistake would be that they're not monitoring their hatchery larva. So if you remember, I was always looking at this command card down here um, and checking to see if I have larva to spend. So what a lot of lower level players will do is they'll be injecting, they'll be doing things decent, but they won't spend their larva right away. Their injection will finish and they'll sit there with the injection just sitting there. And that's basically blocking their larva from creating itself. You're basically just losing larva for no reason. They'll have the money, they have the available larva, and they don't spend it. So what I want to emphasize before we talk about macro hatches is spending your larva as soon as possible. Um, let's just watch my larva count. How do I do that? Units. Do I see larva? I do see larva. Let's just watch my larva count throughout this. very rarely will be above more than three at a time. After an inject, yeah, but I have to spend it. So first you do the queen thing. That was the worst one. That was when three injections finished, I think. So you should, it's constantly just, this is bad, but it wasn't that bad. Let's see how long it actually sat at 10. I don't even know where it was. I think I went too far back. Is it here? So I'm spreading creep. I have five larvae I spent. It's here. So even then, I'm sitting at six. I can spend four of it. Now I can spend the whole six. It's because I'm spreading creep. So I'm prioritizing spreading creep as over spending the larva. So this is a decent amount of time I'm not spending my larva. So that's kind of bad. But just to show how important it is, though, it's one of my like biggest priorities is keeping that at zero because every single time I keep it at zero, I'm generating extra larva. So we've gone six minutes in, and then I think it's every 17 seconds we get a new larva. So do the math and think of how many larva I've generated for free by not having my things capped. Um, obviously the early game is easy, but this mid game where I have three hatcheries constantly pumping out larva every 17 seconds um, is very important. So when we have a macro hatch, 
If you're at the screen to spread, you will notice your library pops, library spend, group spread. Uh, yeah, I would say yes. Ideally, you would prioritize both and be able to do both, but uh, that takes a lot of APM. And if you don't have a lot of APM, I would prioritize the larva spread spend, larva spend, because um, it really, if if you don't do it, you'll float a lot of money, and you'll see zergs with two thousand minerals with three hatcheries that aren't missing hat. They're not missing injections very much, and they're just floating a ton of money because they're not spending their larva. It's very common. You'd be surprised how many players do that. So back to the main topic of macro hatches. Now there's three different styles of zerg that I am aware. Um, there is the roach hydra or roach based zergs where they primarily make roaches. Number two is the mutiling bling style where you have six gasps moving up to eight gasps sometimes. And number three is the Massling Baneling style, which is my personal preference. Um, and then usually into Ultralisks, or sometimes Mutas. And they all take different macro hatch mechanics. Um, the ones that have mostly mineral income, so they don't mine all their gas geysers, are going to need a macro hatch faster. They're going to need maybe an extra macro hatch, so two macro hatches. Well, the Roach based player, Roach Hydra, whatever, they usually don't need as many macro hatches because a roach costs 100 resources while a zergling costs 50 resources so you technically need half the larva. Um, and then the mutiling bling player who has six gases um, also needs slightly less larva. Oh, there will be a VOD fourth job so thanks for hanging out. <coughs> um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, the mutiling bling player has slightly less larva demand because mutas are 200 resources, so it's kind of in between um, Roach Hydra and Ling based uh, Ultra styles. So a rule of thumb is as soon as you have 16, 16, 16, we don't have 16 yet, now we have 16, as soon as you have this, it's time to either take a fourth or take a macro hatch, okay? This is the point in time for all styles where your income is going to be too much for your larva to keep up with, okay? If you're doing, so we're going to start with Ling Bling Muta. You get your 16, you get your 16, you get your 16, you go take your fourth base as soon as you have those 16, and then as soon as you can afford a second macro hatch or a macro hatch. When do I do it here? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So with the Muta build, you take the fourth base, then you saturate your gases. So I have to do one, two, three, four gases. What did I do this game though? I think I did something weird. Oh, I did halfway. Okay, I was doing the wing blink style. Okay, so let's back up. If you are doing a Ling Bling focused Mass Ultra build where you don't take all your gas geysers, you take your fourth base when you have 16 on drones, or 16 drones on each mineral field, you take your fourth, then you take your macro hatchery. Then you can start adding on gases. When you're doing your Muta style, you're going to take all six gases. After take so you take your fourth, you take all six gases, and then you add the macro hatch. If you are doing Roach Hydra, it's the same kind of thing. Um, you might not even need a macro hatch. Depend if your injections are good, you don't need a macro hatch with Roach Hydra. Um, if you are a lower level player who misses injections, feel free to add more than one macro hatch. Um, this game, just as a demonstration, I added a fifth macro hatch. Or sorry, not a fifth macro hatch. Um, a second macro hatch. And it just helps you out. But you don't want to do any kind of macro hatches until you have 16, 16, and 16. Because that is the point in time where your mineral income is too high for your larva to keep up with. Okay. Um, so at this game here, I have 
what is it, six, yeah, six hatcheries, and I'm going to show you that it's too much. I'll demonstrate that it's too much. Let's look at my larva right here. Right now it's pretty good. Still spending it. And now look, I have 15 larva, and I can't afford to use it. And that's the byproduct of this extra hatchery, if that makes sense. So it's ideal to have one, two, three, four, and then I'm I saturated. I pulled drones from here to here slightly. So this is a 75 drone count. Um, so as you can see, I can't support this extra macro hatch is what I was trying to get at. And then I build ultras, and obviously ultras take a lot of money. So that fifth macro hatch is just, I keep saying fifth, the sixth space, the second macro hatch is overkill. I would have been fine to have one, two, three, four, five hatcheries. Um, and again, it really just fluctuates depending on your drone count, what style you're going for. Um, but really it just operates around the 16 mineral field uh, worker count. So just to summarize, I think I said a lot of different things at the same time. Do not put any macro hatches down until you have 16, 16, 16. If you're playing Roach Hydrate, you probably don't even need a macro hatch unless you're missing injections. If you're going for a fast, like bling bling focus and ultraless build, the macro hatch usually comes a lot earlier. If you're going for a tech based build like Mutas, you need to get your gases faster so you delay the macro hatch. If you are sitting here floating 2,000 resources, like 2,000 minerals, and you have this setup, base, 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 and you still have 2,000 minerals, you're probably either missing injections, A, not spending your larva, B, as in you're missing larva generation for free, or C, um, so you're missing the injections, you're missing larva, larva spending, or C, you have too many workers. Um, that's like the only three options. So you got to fix those options. You need to figure that out. So that's usually something you need to do on your own. Um, that pretty much sums up macro hatches. Um, again, if you are a lower level player who doesn't have high APM, who struggles to inject, feel free to add extra hatcheries. Make sure you're just spending your money. Um, it's very important to just have stuff on the playing field rather than sitting inside your bank. Because uh, it's just so frequent to end the game and your opponent has 2,000 resources. How do I add army units to your control group? I have, let's say I have an army control 2. So let me show you what I do in slow-mo. So I need to get to where I'm making units. Hang on. Oh, I'm not going to be able to show you. Okay, well, let's say these are all wings, right? And then, do I have any larva right now? Hang on. Okay, larva. Zerg wings. All right. So you build the units, and now I want to get them into my control group too. So I hold the control key. I click the eggs, which means I only have the eggs selected now. Then I hold the shift key, and I hit the number 2, and that would add it to the control group, because the, the hotkey to add to control group is shift. So I get all my S larva, and I want to get rid of the larva, so I click on the eggs. Okay. Um, you can Google that, or t look it up on Team Liquid, if my explanation wasn't good enough. So, uh... Is there any questions on macro hatches? Do you guys understand, for the most part, that it's really dependent on your mineral saturation early on? <clears throat> Let me know if you have any questions. Let's see what else I want to talk about for tonight. Uh, overlords. 
Alright, Overlords is the hardest one to be good at. Should I use that replay anyway? I think I'm going to have to uh, just demonstrate this one. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, feel free to ask any questions if I'm not being clear or if I'm being overly complicated or if I'm just not communicating well, just let me know and I can try and explain it better. And again, I, I am not a perfect player, so when I show these demonstrations, it's still flawed, but they, you should get the idea behind it. So overlords. Now the first overlords that we make are kind of set. Like we build an overlord at 19, we build an overlord at 31, we build an overlord at like 36, just because that's what we do every single game. But how do we know when to build the next like six overlords? How could you tell? Like we don't have builds for every second of the game. You don't have build orders out to a hundred supply, and you're constantly, you know, losing units and stuff, so it makes it kind of tricky. So what is like a trick? How can you figure out just an easy way to do it? And the answer is easier than you think it is. And I'll show it to you, this game. But the idea behind it is that as soon as your overlord finishes, you start a new overlord. It's actually that simple. Sure thing, man. Thanks for hanging out. Um, this is something that a lot of Zerg players don't know. But if you start um, your next Overlord, as soon as the last one finishes, it finishes like perfectly on time. When's the best time to scout? Um, I'll get to that later. Right now I'm doing stuff with zero... Like, basically, if I'm just trying to max out by myself as fast as possible, how do you do that? Um, I'm not talking about builds or scouting in this quick series. But down the line, I will talk about it if I do more videos like this. Going, bling, and then select control click veins and select all veins and alt 2 or move veins and put them all in group 2. Um, I don't use the control alt thing personally because um, I've already gotten good at doing it a different way. Since I'm an older player. This is before they introduced that. Okay. Anyway, um, when I get into the mid-game here, I'll show you guys what I mean. Um, but yeah, the reason why Trip Tank, I, I don't want to answer that question is because I personally don't know the answer right now. Um, I'm not good enough at the game, aside from macro, to be able to give a good answer. I would just be giving advice that's uh, probably wrong. I don't want to do that. Okay, so let's start thinking about our overlords. Usually you start an overlord about 30, 31. Now let's think about when that overlord finishes. So I'm going to go send this drone over. I have my two queens. Overlord finishes, I'm going to start another overlord. Now watch this. Watch my supply count at how well it works out. See these two injections are about to finish. It finished. Started another overlord. Let's start droning. Look, I would have been supply blocked if I didn't build that overlord right then. Keep on going. Okay. And let's take gas just because. Start another overlord. That overlord just finished. <clears throat> okay, and at this point you can actually slow down a little bit just because we don't have enough larva. Actually, no, it still works out decent. I'm just a little low on larva to support the overlords. So anyway, we're at 53 out of 68, so this is an important note. Do I need an overlord now? I have 53 out of 68, which means I have 15 available supply. If I decide I'm adding two supply units, such as more queens, then yes. If I am not, let's say I build two evo chambers and a roach warren, 
I don't need to build an overlord. So you got to think about it. So this game, adding two queens like that, I'm building an overlord. Okay. <clears throat> now my money's spent decently, and I'm adding my two Evo chambers. So I need to add those. Okay, queen. So now my money's spent, and I'm still not supply blocked. So the reason why, yeah, I banked. The reason why I banked is because I didn't have a build in mind. I took the supply at uh, 36 this game. Um, I change it up. It could be 31, it could be 36, it could be 44. It just depends on what goes on in the game. If your opponent goes Reapers, it's going to be different than if your opponent goes CC first. Alright. So right now... That Overlord, I'm going to build the Overlord. The Overlord finished there. It's not right on time, but you guys get the picture. You see, I haven't been supply blocked once this game, right? So if you follow that mindset, as soon as an Overlord finishes, build another Overlord, you won't get supply blocked. Which is nice. So I'm 73 out of 93. Now I'm at 81 out of 90, I should probably make an Overlord. But you see how I delayed that one. And just like the last game, right on time, 4th base and back for hatch. Okay. I built too many drones, so I'm not paying attention to that part. <laughs> Alright, so now we're making army. Now here's the thing, guys. If I'm making roaches, um, I'm going to be making more overlords. I'm going to make twice as many overlords, because when I make 8 wings, that's 8 supply. If I make 8 roaches, that's 16 supply. So you got to change the rate based on what I'm making. So this game I've been making zerglings and drones, which means I have a pretty constant rate of adding uh, overlords. If I were to add a roach horn and start making roaches, I need to double the rate. So think about it. Um, you really just need to adjust according to that. So in this game, I made an overlord every time my last overlord finished. Let's say I'm making roaches instead. I mean, you need to make probably two overlords every time my two overlords finished. So judge it based on your composition and such. Do you visually check the overlord, or do you know how long it takes to build, or checking the max supply at top? Um, I check it every once in a while. I'm mostly listening. You can hear when the overlords finish. Do I have an overlord building right now? So I'm just coming through my bases. When you inject, yeah, I hear that pretty easily. Um, so anyway, we've hit the point where we have three base economy, okay? Now we are going to start creating units at a rate faster than one overlord at a time, because now we're creating four bases worth of larva instead of two bases. So we need to not only double our overlord production, but closer to triple. So you need to start making probably two or three overlords per cycle now. Um, as you can see, I'm at 106 out of 106. Um, My macro is bad this game because I'm not really macroing um, consciously I'm talking about it. So I did something wrong. <clears throat> anyway, as you can see, 106 went to 120 really quickly. Something distracted me and something got screwed up this game. <laughs> but you get the idea though, you see how now that I'm starting to create an army off of three base economy, my uh, income is much higher, um, so I need to have more larva, and then I need to have more overlords to support them. So it's a multi-step thing. So like right now I just built five overlords. Not only because I had the money, but look, I'm, I'm supply blocked again. So those five overlords are going to be really important. 147, now we're at 190. So I just need two more overlords, so now I'm good. And now, something I didn't really talk about. Let's say I'm playing a Terran player, and we're constantly fighting. I'm not going to always be gaining supply, right? 
I'm going to be gaining and then losing this decline. So you got to pay attention to that too. Let's say I'm at um, 120 overlord supply, so the right number is 120 here. And I have 105 supply of Zerg. And I think I should probably, you know, make some overlords pretty soon. But we're fighting, and I take a fight. During that fight, I'm probably not going to add more overlords, because I'm going to lose probably 10, 20, 30 supply. It's really up to the fight. Um, so you got to gauge that as well. Um, but this is just for baseline macro. I'm not even talking about having an opponent right now. I don't know what went wrong with the macro this game. Um, I think I missed my macro hatch timing or something. I hit 16, 16. I think I delayed the macro hatch too much. I broke my own rule by distracting myself. Alright, let's see what else I want to talk about. That's pretty much all the topics. I'm surprised I got through as much as I did. Do you set rallies from your hatches or do I rally the eggs? So what I do is I take... This is um, also important in regards to the uh, adding army hockey. So I build a bunch of zerglings. Let's see how there are all these zerglings still here. I control click the eggs. I shift number two and added it to the army. And now you can see all those rallies are the eggs. I don't use the this. So I maxed out. So you saw how I, I take the eggs and I add it to the supply. Uh, sorry, the army hockey. And then there are rallies. So my army just reinforces automatically. Um, to be able to, like, let's say I'm being dropped in the main, and I'm attacking at the same time. What I like to do is A click my whole army to the drop, like that, and then manually grab the main army and just control that manually. So now I have my drop defense, obviously that's not accurate, and then I'm controlling this, and then, so that takes a lot of APM, but that's some way you can uh, deal with harassment. Okay, so I think that's all the topics I really want to cover for now. Um, if you guys have any questions outside of the topics, I have 10 minutes until I need to do something else. Um, I'm coaching someone for an hour. Um, so if anyone has anything they want to know, now's the time to ask. Any ways to improve your APM? I honestly, it sounds dumb. And you're gonna think it's stupid, but to spam like this, uh, do it. Whether you think it's ironic, you will start playing faster if you think you're playing faster. I know it's dumb, but trust me, I didn't get fast by not spamming like this. I got fast by slowly filling in the stupid actions with real actions. So now I can come back through here, do this, go to number four, spread creep, come over here, come over here, spread creep, come over here, spread creep, because I'm used to clicking that fast. Um, it's really silly, but it actually works. Um, but besides that, it's just practice makes perfect. Um, the more games you play, the better you will be, the faster you start to play. The first time I broke 100 APM, I was so proud of myself, like five years ago, six years ago now. Um, and now I play at 300 APM, so it just takes time. Let's see if anyone else... Cover swarm hosts. Um, swarm hosts are the greatest things ever made. <laughs> Let me show you a replay of my one base build. No, I don't, I don't have time. Um, I've never actually tried swarm hosts in a ladder game since I came back, though. Ever since the buff, I've never tried it, so I can't make a real comment. Do you know how to tough type? What is to tough type? I personally rapid fire inject. Um, I think it's easier. Best way to larva inject? I covered a little earlier, but uh, I put all my hockey, all my queens on hockey number five. 
and then I hold space bar, which is my base cam, and they go like across my bases, and I just hold B, and I click, 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 click. And since all my bases, whenever I play, my bases will be connected by creep. The queens work out very well. So, um, I think I'm going to rip that and put that on YouTube, but hopefully you guys learned at least something. Where can you sign up for one-on-one? -on -one? Um, right now it's uh, for my clan only, my uh, psionic aftermath. Um, I offer free lessons to the people in it. But, uh, yeah, you have to be on our Discord and PM me. Do you have bindings to your mouse, or do you use all numbers on keyboard? I have a death adder, so I have these two buttons here. And my back button is select all army key, which I barely use. And then the front button is select idle workers. Do you think knowing how to type traditionally plays helps with StarCraft play? Um, I don't type traditionally. I type with only these fingers. I don't use my left or my far right hand. So maybe, but not for me. I'll switch roaches on my queen hockey for defense units. That's actually pretty smart. Actually, I've never thought of doing that. Whoa. If I'm getting counterattacked, I can rally my lings onto the queen hockey. Dang, I might try that. It's a good idea. How do you defend cannon rush? Um, if they are super, super committed, go one base ravager and break out slowly. If it's like one cannon, pull your drones. Because you can break it with just drones. But if they have like four cannons, you need to uh, deal with that. Free lessons? Yeah. Um, 